Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome again to the new lecture of the course Fundamentals and Applications of Dielectric Ceramics. So just, let us just briefly recap the previous lecture. So, in the previous lecture, we finished our discussion on phase transitions in ferroelectric materials. So basically the take home message for that is that the in the in the in the second order phase transition the polarization drops gradually near T C until T C and the susceptibility shows a 1 over chi shows a decreasing behavior as it approaches from paraelectric to ferroelectric region. So this region is ferroelectric and this region is paraelectric, right? And this is basically you can say the boundary between the two. And this is for second order, right? And this is because and this is also manifested in the free energy, second derivative of free energy showing a discontinuity, whereas first derivative is continuous. So, as a result, there is no latent yield involved in this transition. If you look at the first order, the first order shows a different behavior. In the first order, when you plot P versus T, the polarization suddenly drops to 0 at T C. Okay. So, this is uh, abrupt change in polarization and the susceptibility change is manifested in this fashion. So, this is a change in susceptibility with susceptibility of high temperature region extrapolating back to a temperature T0 and between T0 and T C we have uh, the three one, subs one more subsidiary minima in free energy uh, landscape between these two temperatures and in this again this is a ferroelectric region and this is paraelectric region. And uh, this is manifested in the first energy of first derivative of free energy being discontinuous or entropy being discontinuous. Okay. Now let us uh, and we 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 also started our discussion little bit on on switching in ferroelectrics, where we looked at the ferroelectric hysteresis loop, which shows a behavior like this. And now we are going to talk about the microscopic mechanisms of why do we get such a behavior in ferroelectric uh, switching. So, we for such a switching behavior because in the beginning you change your ferroelectric hysteresis like this and then once it achieves a saturation when you bring it back to lower fields then the polarization does not come back to initial state rather it goes to a state PR state. So, question is what is the reason? The reason for these as we said lies in domains. So, we will start our discussion on domains or rather ferroelectric domains. So, as we said ferroelectric domain is basically if you take a crystal small crystal and if all the polarization vectors are aligned in one direction then this will be called as mono domain state. Okay, so, all the polarization vector. So, basically a domain is a region in which the polarization of the and the all the polarization vectors or all the dipoles are aligned in one direction. So, that is called as a domain and domain is not a grain boundary is not to be confused with the grain boundary. Grain boundary is about crystal orientation, the differences in crystal orientations of neighboring grains where domains is about the polarization orientation with respect to applied field and polarization orientation within a particular region. So, it is possible that you know within a grain you can have multiple domains, it is also possible that several when you apply large electric field despite having several grains the whole material becomes in mono domain state. So, go, it is not to be confused with the grain boundaries. So, domain is basically a region of single orientation of polarization. 
polarization right. Now, so when you start from let us say cubic system, let us say you have cubic material and if you cool it below T c, so this is paraelectric state right, paraelectric state when you cool it below T c, the system transforms let us say it becomes tetragonal right. So, your C parameter becomes little larger than the A parameter as a result you have some distortion. Now, what may happen in this system is that since if you have a mono domain let us say you convert in this fashion and you think that all the dipoles are now aligned in this direction because the polar axis in such a material let us say if it is a case of barium titanate then the polar axis in such a material will be along the C axis which is 0, 0, 0,01 axis. So, polar axis is in ferroelectric state is C axis. So, you would say that you would assume that all the polarization vectors will be aligned in one direction. Now, if all these polarization vectors will allow are aligned in one direction, you will have massive surface charge density. So, you will have all the negative charges aligned here and all the positive charges aligned here. So, you will have massive surface charge density on the surfaces of crystal. Suppose this crystal is of the order of you know 1 centimeter by 1 centimeter by 1 centimeter in terms of dimension this means massive charge density right. This massive charge density leads to creation of what we call as a depolarization field. So, depolarization field is something which would like to minimize the surface charge density. So, this single orientation of polarization sets up what we call as depolarizing field. And this depolarizing field will oppose the polarization. So, while all the dipoles would like to align in one direction, there will be massive surface charge density as a result electrostatic energy will increase and this will lead to depolarization of charges. So, these two act in competition with each other. Eventually, what will happen because of competition of polarization energy and depolarization energy, the system will transform into a situation something like this. Let us say, if I now create a situation in which I have two regions within the same crystal, one with orientation P like this, another with orientation P like this, then this will have, this will have surface charge density in this fashion. So, now the net surface charge density has gone down, but while the net surface charge density has gone down, we have created an interface between the two. So, this is a surface, extra surface, surfaces always cost energy. So, it is a competition between also the depolarizing, so depolarizing energy has to reduction in the electrostatic energy due to depolarizing field has to compete with the surface energy, right. So, reduction, so on one hand we are going to reduce electrostatic energy by having depolarizing field which will prevent charges build up. On the other hand we will increase surface energy which is in the form of domain wall. So, which is in the form of domain wall which is basically the interface, the interface between the two just like a grain boundary you will have a domain wall energy. So, these domains are created now the type of domains which are created will depend upon the type of material. So, for example, if you have a tetragonal crystal you will create 180 degree domain walls and you will create 90 degree domain walls. But if you have for example, uh, rhombohedral crystal such as lead zirconate titanate, this is rhombohedral, this will give rise to 180 degree domains, also 71 degree domains and 109 degree domains. So, depending upon the type of crystal system that we have, you will have different types of domains in the system. Okay. So, so, as I said, 
it is the competition between the depolarization energy. So, competition between depolarization energy which minimizes the electrostatic energy and the domain wall energy or the domain energy will so one is negative another is positive will lead to to a stable domain size which means we need to deal with the energetics of the process right so for a ferroelectric crystal we express the energy as so uh, the free energy change that is a we can write the free energy change upon formation of domains as so if you write delta g which is g minus g naught which will be it's it's composed of few energies one is let's say uc one other is up another is ux another is you know uw another is ud so let's say uc is the energy which is effect of applied field okay on domain energy uw is basically uh, up and U, up is basically bulk let's say electrical energy and this is bulk elastic energy right So, these are basically material dependent parameters uh, for a given material you will have certain electrical uh, energy and elastic energy then uw is what we call as domain wall energy or right now we will write as a domain energy and ud is nothing but depolarizing energy related to depolarization okay so you can say it is depolarization related energy okay to get a stable domain structure this delta g versus let's say d of delta g versus if the domain size is delta this has to be equal to 0 which means delta g is minimum for a stable delta that is a stable domain size where delta is the domain size okay so basically these materials uh, ux up they are material parameters they are same in each domain and uc is effect of applied field these energies can be treated as constant so we will so these energies do not vary much depending upon the domain size so these we can treat as constant okay so we can write this delta g as a constant let us say a okay, or just say u naught which is a constant plus u w plus u d u w the expression is gamma which is a surface energy domain wall energy multiplied by the volume multiplied divide, uh, divided by the uh, delta which is the domain wall uh, domain thickness a uh, domain width. So, this is uh, you can say surface inter domain wall energy. So, this is wall energy, interfacial energy basically, this is volume, crystal volume, and this is uh, domain width. Okay. So, this is the expression for uh, we can say that uh, UW. UD, on the other hand, is given as epsilon star into delta into v into p naught square that is the polarization uh, <coughs> at the center of the domain and then divided by thickness which is the crystal thickness thickness of crystal this is polarization in the middle of the crystal in the middle of the domain this is dielectric constant 
uh, and uh, so this is dielectric constant. V is the volume, delta is the domain width. Now, what we are going to do is that we are going to take a derivative of this delta G with respect to. So, we take D of delta G with respect to D of delta and this must be equal to 0. So, when we do that what we get is we get epsilon star into V into P naught square divided by T minus of gamma into V into delta square this is equal to 0. right? So, from this we determine delta as gamma T divided by epsilon naught P naught to the power 1 by T. This is the stable domain wall width that you get in ferroelectric material. So, you can see here this delta is proportional to gamma. So, which means higher the uh, higher the interfacial energy is smaller will be uh, uh, bigger will be the domain size that makes sense higher the interfacial energy is. So, this is like grain boundaries higher the grain boundary energy is larger the grain sizes because you would like to minimize the surface energy. So, any increase in gamma will prefer bigger domains. Similarly, if you make the crystal thicker which means the net. So, this is like charge density the charge density per unit volume of the crystal also goes down which means you can manage with bigger domains. The electric constant if you increase the electric constant of the material. So, this is the epsilon star if you increase the electric constant of the material which means you will polarize the material more which means you will have more depolarizing energy which means you would have smaller domains. Higher the polarization again this is P naught square sorry just one second and higher the polarization again you will have uh, more more polarize more separation of the charges as a result you will have more charge density which will create more depolarizing energy and as a result. So, basically these two factors lead to larger delta and these two factors lead to smaller delta and this is the surface energy term and this is the term which is related to polarization or depolarization energy of the material. So, this is the stable domain size that you get in the material uh, essentially. Now, uh, different type of crystals will give you how does it look macroscopically, macroscopically, microscopically sorry microscopically. So, suppose you have a crystal like this okay, in which you have these multiple regions. Okay. So, crystal at the center the central atom in this case all of them have this orientation right. It is moved up from the central position. So, this is all pointing up okay. creation of a domain wall let us say at this point. So, if you create domain wall here then this leads to formation of a slightly different So, what will happen is that in these two regions the atom will remain shifted up. In these regions we will have atom shifted down because the polarization is now shifted. So, these regions will have up in these regions it will be down and somewhere in these two in the regions in the middle there will be a change in the domain wall. So, so these regions will have some variation. So, you might you might have little bit of sort of intermediate position somewhere here. So, this region will be the domain wall. The region of disturbance along which the orientation changes because you have this change in orientation from here to here these changes will not be abrupt they will be little random. So, as a result each domain will all, wall will also have domain wall width. which is sort of of the order of a unit cell or so. They are little sh they are much more sharper than magnetic domain walls, uh, but there will be a region in which they will have to go transition from up to down. So, they could be about a unit cell across which the transition occurs.
Okay. So, this is basically a domain wall as I said domain walls are of multiple types. So, you can have in this case I have shown you 180 degree domain walls, that, but there is a possibility that you might create something like this. You might have a crystal in which um, let us say something like this. So, I just wanted to show uh, ok. So, I just wanted to show 90 degree domain walls. So, let us say the orientation in this case is like this and this is a domain wall that you create in between. So, in this case the this atom may be sitting right at the center, whereas in these regions the domain the, 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 the polarization may be in this direction. So, here the p is like this, in this case the p could be like this. So, this is p down in all the way. So, there will be a gradual transition within this region. So, this will be domain wall with gradual change. Right. So, as I said there are multiple domain walls in tetragonal crystals generally we observe 90 degree domain walls like this. So, this is a 90 degree domain wall because polarization changes from this to this. So, this is P, this is P uh, and 180 degree domain walls in which so this is like this. In this case it would be like this, uh, but depending upon the crystal orientation you may have multiple orientations and there are some nice papers available on which you can see that different crystals will show different orientations. So, uh, so domain wall type, domain wall angle would be determined by crystal system. Okay. But generally when we talk of tetragonal crystals, we talk of 90 degree and 180 degree domains. So, now let us see once we know how the domains form basically what happens in case of free energy in case of uh, in case of switching is um, <coughs> essentially when you start switching ok. So, you start at this point P E in this material at this point A although material has domains but in it is in the polycrystalline state. So, you might have a material these are the grains. Okay. Now, these grains will have domains let us say domain distribution is something like this assuming that domain size is so red ones are domain boundaries. Now, it might happen that the polarization vectors are rotated randomly. So, we have random domain orientation as a result sigma mu is equal to 0. So, you have 0 polarization. So, in this state you can say that number of equally number of this and this are equal. Okay. So, p up is equal to p down okay. 0 polarization as you start switching it in the linear region you just create polarization because of electric field associated polarization. So, this is the linear region. When you increase the electric field what you do is that in these crystals let us say we apply the electric field in this direction we start nucleating new domains of the which are oriented along the direction of electric field. So, what will happen is that let us say this is the these are the few domains we will start nucleating new domains in this direction which are oriented in this direction and they are generally created at the interfaces. So, at this point we will have nucleation of new favorably oriented domains okay. and up to this point up to which all of them are oriented they will 
keep increasing in size at the expense of old domains. So these domains will keep growing as you increase the strength of electric field in this direction irrespective of the orientation of previous domain. Previous domain could have been like this, but the new domains are all oriented along the electric field. So basically this region is the region in which growth of new domains which will consume the old domain something like Ostwald ripening. Once all the domains are oriented again you will have a change in linear region. So this is where we will have a state in which whole material will be in this state monodomain state. Okay. So what might happen is that initially you might form a domain which is slightly tilted to E which starts nucleating finally the domain will also orient towards the electric field. So once you reach a monodomain state when you switch off the electric field at 0 the domains do not get back. So only some of the domains get back to previous different orientations but or not all domains come back. So what might happen at this point is you will have a crystal in which have so I am not going to draw the grains I am just going sorry I am just going to draw the domains I am not going to draw the grain boundaries okay just the domains. So what might happen now is that let us say our electric field is now 0 but most of the domains remain oriented in this direction very few domains come back in this direction. So as a result your net mu is not equal to 0 and you have basically more polarization in this direction than in this direction. So basically sigma p is not equal to 0. So that is where you cause remanent polarization. Now to bring all the domains back to 0, back to this orientation you need to apply a field which is called as coarse field at this point then number of if you, if you now look at the bigger picture number of domains which are oriented in this direction and number of domains which are up oriented in this direction this is the sort of state you want to achieve when sigma mu is equal to 0. So oppositely oriented domains are equal in fraction and then again the same process repeats as you go in the negative cycle. So this is how the switching occurs in ferroelectrics by formation of new favorably oriented domains to the direction of applied electric field and their growth and then saturation when all the domains get aligned there is nothing more to be aligned you basically saturate the polarization but when you come back to zero electric field the domains do not revert back to original position. Okay. Uh, you can say it is because of friction in the lattice or whatever but uh, they do not get back to the original position and to bring them back to original configuration of equal domain proportion of opposite types you will have to apply an extra electric field which is called as coercive field that is why it is coercive English word coercive means coercion you are forcing the material back to zero polarization by applying an extra electric field and these states are by the way equal and opposite so plus EC and minus EC are equal in magnitude similarly plus PR minus PR are equal plus PS and minus PS are equal and opposite because material for a given material for a limited volume. So in this lecture what we have done is we have looked at the domains in, in ferroelectric materials their, re, their origin and how they play an important role in switching uh, and that is why they give rise to a hysteresis that we observe. So we will stop here and in the next lecture we will uh, finish our discussion on ferroelectrics and we will talk of piezoelectric, pyroelectric and ferroelectric materials. Okay. Thank you very much.